And now, a Stream of Conscience commentary with Anne Galloway. All great civilizations eventually fail, and Darwin may have provided the best explanation. Humans have more developed brains, but like other animals, we often operate according to survival of the fittest or eat or be eaten. When the chips are down, animal instincts seem to trump humane values. Today's America is experiencing class warfare that could spell its death knell. The elites have become very clever using well-researched propaganda techniques to mask a huge shift in resource allocation from the many to the few and in persuading the public that unprovoked wars and mass brutality conducted by our military and security personnel is a patriotic endeavor. But consider the huge profits wars generate for industries that traffic in weapons and fossil fuels. Consider the horrific human toll, or for that matter, the effects of on, on our federal budget. The war of choice in Iraq and the endless occupation of Afghanistan have killed or maimed hundreds of thousands including close to 100,000 Iraqi civilians, more than 5,000 American and NATO dead, plus 320,000 military personnel who have come home with serious, lasting injuries. These wars have cost taxpayers more than a trillion dollars that could have been used for job creation and infrastructure repair, that could have helped keep teachers in classrooms with their pensions intact, and provided better health care for every citizen. Yet sanitized reporting has masked the horrific human toll caused by our so-called democracy. The military industrial foxes are fully in charge of the chickens. The mega wealthy and those in Washington who do their bidding are without any social conscience. Supported by most of our mainstream media, they are determined this time to prevail. These special interests now have a virtual monopoly over most of what we read see and hear. The excesses of Rupert Murdoch's empire have made the headlines, but Murdoch is just the tip of the iceberg. Five companies in the United States own over half of all radio and television stations, newspapers, and magazines. Locally, only the tiny Hersom Acorn Weeklies and the Norwalk Hour operate outside of this monolith. Even The Current, our state's largest newspaper, shares space in its newsroom with Fox. A clear example of media collusion with moneyed elites is the lack of coverage of the Wall Street protests. The public editor of the New York Times has admitted that they have had a number of complaints from readers. He might have added that when his paper finally got around to writing a story, it was biased and snarky. Most of the media today provides cover for our 21st century robber barons who, like Murdoch, are today's equivalent of the businessmen and bankers who plundered this country in the 19th century and not for the first time have put us in a deep financial hole. Today's robber barons, having learned from past experience, do not intend to be restrained this time. They and their allies write our legislation. The laws of the jungle may look different in modern society, but it has become increasingly clear that similar rules continue to apply. It is our job to put these animal spirits back in their cages and resurrect the American dream before we all get eaten. This has been a Stream of Conscience commentary. I'm Ann Galloway. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.